Hey everyone, how are you all doing? So, um, as sure pretty much everyone knows by now that Hurricane Milton is pretty much at this point on the coast of the west coast side of Florida, and it is a very dire situation. It's a very scary situation for most. Um, very heartfelt uh, situation. My heart goes out to all the people who are experiencing this, all the people who are having to deal with it, deal with this, and all the people who have loved ones that are having to deal with this. So I thought it was super important to share this video about certain people that have chosen to stay in Florida off the West Coast during Hurricane Milton. And I thought it was super important to share why these people have chosen to stay so that we can have a bigger picture as to the situations and conditions that some people are facing and dealing with right now with dealing with Hurricane Milton. So let's get into this first video. I'm going to share this video first, and then we're going to share a couple other people's experiences, okay? There it is. You know what they say, um, run from the water, hide from the wind. It's 9 a.m. here in Tampa, and shit is looking dicey to start. Okay, I decided not to evacuate. I live on the 11th floor of a high-rise building. I'm in the heart of downtown. You know what they say, um, run from the water, hide from the wind. Water ain't coming up 200 feet, so I decided to stay. But since I am staying, I thought I would give you guys like a boots on the ground live update of what's happening for the next 48 hours, okay? So let me show you what I'm working with right now. So right out there, right behind those buildings, that's the bay. And right here is the river walk, obviously. I don't know if y'all can see all the way over there. There's markings where it says where the water's at. So it says uh, 10, 12, and 14, and it's below the 14. And if you can see, all the water is being sucked backwards out towards the bay, which means we are just going to get absolutely fucking shit on. I was here two weeks ago for Helene, and the water was coming up all the way. It covered the river walk right around here. So if they're saying 10 to 15 feet surges, I would not be shocked if it fills this entire parking lot, honestly. I'm now on the rooftop of my building showing y'all what it looks like from like a bird's eye view looking down. So obviously this is the Hillsborough River that leads out into the bay. This right here is Davis Island that got messed up two weeks ago by Helene. Right in front of it, this tiny little like dot, that's Tampa General on Davis Island. This is the bay. You can see the storm starting to roll in. This is all going to be flooded without a doubt. So as the storm progresses, I'll show you guys updates as we go. It's 9 a.m. here in Tampa, and shit is looking dicey. To All time. right, so you, know they you say, guys um, saw that video, and I know a lot of people probably like, oh, she's lucky, you know, she's up there, she's got nothing to worry about. So, you know, even some people is like, oh, she's like bragging about her situation that she's just, she doesn't have to worry about, she can just wait it out. But is it really practical that everyone is able to leave? Because I've, we're going to get into a couple of videos where I, I, I think it's actually impractical that everyone is going to be able to leave. So some people who may be in a situation like hers, uh, maybe they should try to stay back and wait it out if they are in a situation like hers, where she's able to get so high up that the water and the wind damage and all that may not harm cause harm to her. So anyway, y'all, let's get into another video here I want to share with you guys. <clears throat> That's, it is 5, 10. I can't sleep. Anxiety through the roof. So I don't know the storm supposed to touch down, but Bay Shore is already at waist level. That's not good. Um, the storm haven't even got close, and it's already at waist level. So that is definitely a bad sign. That means when the storm do get here, all that's gonna be extremely high and extremely flooded. The area I'm in, they told us to have enough food for three days, enough water for three days to survive without power. I will say if we go without power, um, I'm going to try to do like a, a barbecue maybe in my backyard. Um, I do got a lot of water. I did put water in the freezer. So if my power go out, I could throw out in the sink to keep it like good and cold. I got bread, meat, um, 
Y'all, I'm so scared. My anxiety is up to here. I cannot sleep. I cannot rest. I'm overthinking. I am ready for this to be done and over. And I think me seeing the reporter cry is like just top tier for me. Um, I got three children. I do got a life jackets. We are ready to survive. And I'm just in mama mode right now, bitch. Like, I'm going to have to make sure these kids is okay. It is five. T- so for her, I'm really, really concerned because I, I don't know how far inland or up north she is um but i'm thinking if she's got four, three small kids or three kids uh, i'm hoping she has someone else there to assist her with all three of these kids my concern is for her is that the storm surge is gonna come in so high and so aggressive that what she's planning to do that she may not actually get a chance to do um so oh my gosh yeah okay let's get on to the next one people want to know why that we haven't evacuated and why many others down here haven't evacuated would you tell them? Yes. I'm not here because I want to be. The tragedy to my family. I lost my son five days ago. And I was trying to make preparations to get him back to the ship for the burial. All my reservations at last minute was canceled. My airplane flights. So that's why I'm here. And the other thing I'm here for, this last hurricane, I've got seniors living in my community. They're in their 80s. I'm a soldier from the 60s. We went around helping people get out and survive. I filled my house full of neighbors. I prepared and I helped them. And some of these homes in this neighborhood are still not repaired because the insurance companies went broke. FEMA came, they knocked on my door. They, they didn't care to talk to me at first. What they wanted to do was a tape measure to measure how deep the water was in my home. They wanted to measure the outside of my home. Did they give me some help? They gave me a few cases of water. They gave me some rations, sea rations. I'm, I'm familiar with that, being a military man in the 60s. That was fine. At least it was something. As far as rebuilding, I was fortunate. I was fortunate because I could afford to rebuild my home without their money. My neighbors couldn't. They're struggling. But the community pulled together. They pulled together. A few neighbors stay. But I did then to help the community. My main focus leaving here was to put my son at rest in Michigan. And now I'm going through this. To try to drive out of here is the first time the governor didn't shut down both sides of the freeway. People I know are still stuck and the worst zones after 20 hours of leaving because there is no way back now and now the winds are coming the waters are rising this is what it is i got enough for my daughter that came in to help her dad they're just trying times 
and we help the community also. So that's why I'm here. When people say I'm a fool, I should have got out. I live my life. I'm not looking for death. And I'm old. I want to survive too. So when you say I'm a fool, you should know the circumstances and should have a heart that there's people like me and my few neighbor soldiers, all of them are soldiers like me, decorated, help our community. So for God's sake, pray for us. That's all I can do. And think twice before you condemn people for staying in harm's way. I didn't have a choice when I was in the military. You either fought or you died. It's sad. You didn't smoke marijuana when you're in enemy territory. It was the times. And I still have great friends from there that was all successful like I was. But it means nothing about success, nor does it mean anything about money when you have it. It doesn't mean anything. Those that make me feel better. So pray. And now you know how it feels from a father that just lost his son. Trying to get him back home. And possibly if I hadn't had that, I probably still would have stayed to help these neighbors in their 80s that I got out of houses with the help of my soldier brothers. Thank you. Dad. Okay, so let's get back here. So a lot of people, we got to think, guys, let's, let's, let's be honest. There are so many people who were already in a bad situation financially because the economy that we're in and uh, imagine already suffering in a bad economy, already barely been able to pay your bills. And then all of a sudden you have to figure out how to come up with the money to either rent a car or have enough gas money to take you out of the state. And Florida is huge. So you're gonna need a lot of gas, a lot of gas. You may even have to fill up twice before you actually are able to get out of the state. Um, you're supposed to have a hotel money. You're supposed to have extra money for expenses that are gonna come up when you travel and you go out on the road. You're supposed to have a flight money. And a lot of people said a week before the store came in, they had already shut down um, flights and they had raised the flight prices like just astronomically. So you guys, people don't have the money or means to leave. And then you have the entire state trying to leave within a few days. And, and people say, why do you wait till last minute? Well, a lot of people didn't wait till last minute. Some people were still dealing with Hurricane Helene. And so they were dealing with that. And then all of a sudden now I got to readjust myself and get my, get my things together, get my family together. And we got to try to get out of here when you're already having problems probably because with gas and transportation because of Hurricane Helene. And then you got Milton on top of it all. So you guys, let's just, let's send up a, as many prayers, well wishes, whatever to these people to hope that as many people are possible are protected and are able to either evacuate or they're able to get rescued, you guys. Um, so yeah, like my heart goes out to all of these people. I mean, even the lady on that high rise, things could even happen with that. I mean, she could be in there way longer than she expected because it takes so long for rescue e efforts. And my heart really goes out to the young lady that has kids because um she was saying that they told her to get food for three days i'm like that's not enough that i don't think that's going to be enough because how long is it going to take relief efforts and i think the 
the devastation that is supposed to happen. I don't want to be fear mongering, but the expected level of devastation is so great that I think it's going to take a good amount of time before a lot of people are able to get reached and rescued. We got people still in North Carolina that has not been able to get reached or there's people still missing. And that was about a week ago now, guys. So anyway, I'm making this video because I really want people to understand what's get a full view of what's going on. There's people who can't evaluate, evacuate that would like to be able to evacuate. All right, you guys, y'all have a wonderful day. Please send prayers up to all these people and I will talk to you, get to you guys again later. Bye-bye for now.